Okay, here we are again. Um, we did go ahead and put paper towels in each of the intakes just to make sure that no foreign object like a nut or a boulder dirt might get in there and uh, jam up because these tubes feed directly into the cylinders, you know that. Anyway, we looked at the, um, the, um, we took the plugs off, the, um, injectors, there's one of the injectors right there, the plug-in, the injector sits, you know, part of it as below, you know. So we realized that all the injectors are the same orange color and except for one. And so that's orange, yeah, that's number five, number six is orange, number four is orange, number um, two is orange, and the only one that's not orange is number three, because we replaced that one in 2011. So number three has been replaced. Now number two seems to be acting up. At least that's what the code says. So we're going to check the ohms through the um, these two prongs here. Let me see if I can point better through these two prongs right here, where the where the injector plug goes. Here's the inject. Here's what the injector plug looks like. It's just, it's just a, a harness. It has a plug for each of the injectors. So we're going to check the ohms and compare it to the other ones that seem to be working right. And if the ohms are bad, that means it's bad. The injector is bad. The other thing we're going to do is check the voltage to see that it's pulsing out of the injector. Plug. This one here looks like number five. We lay, yeah, it's a good idea to label all of them before you take them off, okay? And we even labeled the rail with like number one injector. This one says uh, number three, and we also etched on there, replaced in uh, R and R 2011. I don't know if you can read that, but anyway, that's the kind of stuff you want to do for yourself. So the next time you come back, you know what you got, or what you did before, you know. That's number three injects already been replaced in 2011. Now it's 2013, about almost exactly two years later. And we labeled number five injector. It's just sitting below there, where the five's written. And then number four injector. We labeled that. So in other words, you want to. We just etched it right on the fuel rail, actually, with the knife. And you want to. You want to do stuff like that because uh, it keeps it straight in your mind and it eliminates errors. And the worst thing is to get it all back together and find out you got the injectors wrong, and then you don't know what's wrong with it. You might think the computer's bad or something, and really it's not. It's just. And the same thing, like I said in that other video with the silly cap. Number one actually goes to a contact inside over here. So this is number one plug wire, but these caps are made multi-dimensional, like layered inside, like a sandwich. And inside it goes over here to the actual contact inside for number one is right here. So if you look at this old thing I made, the actual firing order is one, two, three, four, five, six as I said, but the, uh, so here's the firing order, one, two, three, four, five, six, but the way the cap's made, see the rotation's this way, counterclockwise, number one goes, this dotted line here, over to inside, at top bit center, is the number one contact inside the cap, but you wouldn't know that from looking at the cap from the outside, you'd think number one contact inside would be directly below number one, but it's not. It's actually over here in between these two. So it's kind of like a sandwich layer in there. And as I said earlier, why do they do that? Well, it makes it harder for people to knock off their caps. I mean, you know, to duplicate them and sell them cheaper makes more difficulty, more confusion, more repairs, more cars in the junkyard, more waste, more pollution, more sales, more money for the car makers. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Oh, another thing: when you take the um, the top hat off, the plenum co cover, you have to take this thing loose too. There's two bolts for this, 
right here and here and then this whole assembly just lifts out of the way but uh, like I said you still have to take these other two things off here and this and they're not connected so you got four more bolts there and then you got this gasket that goes um, between here and the plenum so you want to save all your gaskets unless you got a whole new gasket kit for everything these look pretty good so I'm not going to bother replacing these um, you want to be careful to keep all dirt, dust, sand, anything like that out of anything you take loose. So it's a good idea to blow it out first if you have an air gun and try to get as much of the junk out of the way as possible before you take the rail off. But to take the rail off, you take these two bolts right there off and the rail just basically lifts up. It's connected here with the flexible high pressure fuel line you can see it here it's cut it's got a covering on it but it's that's just protective it's it's a high pressure um, fuel line and the uh, some of this other stuff is just mainly vacuum lines so I run them over here see that but the actual fuel rails are supplied with um, they actually feed off of each other so the fuel comes in here from the high pressure line, comes up here, comes around, goes underneath this line, and now it comes into the rail, this rectangular rod, and then it actually has a tube connected here over to the other rail to feed the first, you know, cylinders one, three, and five. And uh, that's how it works. You probably have to take this loose too just to get it out, possibly, but these two bolts here are primary. There's another bolt over here you should really have in place to solidify it. Okay, we'll do another video when we're close to the end.